by special request. This is an addendum, really, to the combat video in this series on the Ubiquity role-playing system. For those of you who are still waiting for the entry on magic, it has been recorded. It's now in editing. And for reasons similar to how this video will be put together, it's been taking a little bit longer than I expected. Mainly because there are things that are true to all Ubiquity games, and they're best to talk about all at once as though they are a universal truth, because they are. But then there are specific and very interesting details which can lead you off on tangents related to the specific games. These are often simply color or you know, descriptive, but still important things to conceptualize. So keeping the right concepts grouped together and keeping the right details separate uh, takes some time in editing. Now, this video is about, well, at its heart, this is about alternate, more descriptive combat skills available in Ubiquity. What do I mean by that? Well, in Hollow Earth Expedition, as originally presented, we are given the melee skill, which covers combat using tools other than firearms. So picking up a, a, a club, using a sword, using a knife, using an axe, that, that sort of thing. Picking up a tool in order to do bodily harm to another being. This was melee. It could represent a, a primitive survival-based skill, you know, knowing how to use a knife to defend yourself against all the terrors out there in the jungle, using a, uh, you know, a stone club as a, as a primitive society, uh, the ability to, to fight as a trained fighter who has been you know, a soldier, who has been in wartime situations. It's a very broad skill that you can color to match your character. As it stands, melee works like any other skill. It helps you build your rating. To it, you add the, the weapon rating, and you get a final you know, attack pool. In some Ubiquity games, however, there is additional focus placed on melee combat, such as all-for-one Regime Diabolique, which is, at its heart, a swashbuckling, musketeer, sword-fighting-against-supernatural-horrors kind of game. Having the option to focus in greater detail on swordplay is an advantage here, and is very cleverly done. All for one adds the fencing skill. Recently, Revelations of Mars was released, and this also adds a skill in the same way that All for One did with fencing. Here it's bundled together and called armed combat. So we have melee as the combat of skill that you could simply take if you want your character to be proficient in using you know, melee weapons. Armed combat, if you'd like to get into greater detail, have a fighting style and have that fighting style matter mechanically in the game. Adding in the ability to, to talk about your, your training lineage and the strengths and weaknesses of that combat style and produce or introduce different story elements as a relation to that. So for the purpose of this video, to keep it short, I'm not going to go into all the details of you know, all the fencing schools and fencing styles presented in All for One, and likewise not with all the, the styles presented in Revelations of Mars. I'll simply use fencing as the catch-all term and it'll apply across all of these elements, and <laughs> this will not be a 20 or 30 minute video, maybe. So, what are we talking about? The more detailed fighting skills, such as fencing or armed combat, enables the group to bring in the specialization mechanic to your die pool related to your combat style. So, all for one in the core book presents nine schools of fence. These are later expanded in a PDF only expansion 
Uh, there were two. One was called Fencing Schools. The other was called Fencing Schools 2. These two supplements taken together greatly expand the material devoted to the idea of the actual salon, the fencing school, and all the talents and resources that would be connected with that. All the, the social maneuvering and uh, relationships and, uh, and benefits that come from being a member of an organization that's training itself uh, to survive in that day and age. Also, new styles of fencing are introduced. We won't get into the details, as I said. Now, how is the specialization mechanic harnessed? Well, the narration of combat becomes more important. Already in Ubiquity, you're being encouraged to describe in detail what you are doing, you know, using movement and if it's a if it's a feint, if it's a thrust, if it's a slash, in order to build opportunities to further describe action and earn and spend style points on on exciting pulp heroic adventure actions. Well, these mechanics take you a step further by actually giving you incentive related to your specific fencing style to try to bring the narration around to that kind of thing. So we have scores given for disarming, feinting, parrying, thrusting, and slashing in all for one. So very similar in Revelations of Mars. There you get bash, hack, parry, slash, and thrust. Depending on your style, you'll receive a plus one, or a minus one, or a zero to a combination of those things. In all for one, you're going to see usually two plus ones, a zero, and two minus ones. So if you are a student of the Spanish school of fence, then you would expect to have a minus one to disarm, a minus one to feint, no bonus or penalty, a zero, to parry, and then plus ones to slash and thrust. This is a very aggressive school of fence dedicated to offense as defense. Right? Very fast, very aggressive moving forward. And you, so you can see that represented in the specialization. Compared to Del Rio, which is the school of dirty tricks and deception, which is not really looking to kill the opponent, it's more looking to defeat the opponent, socially acceptable for duels and the like. Del Rio gives its bonuses to disarm and feint, is neutral on parry, and has the minus ones to slash and thrust. All right, so it's easy to remember and quick to apply. If you are narrating a thrust and you're a Spanish school fencer, you add plus one to your rating. So your rating, as a reminder, is your base attribute, your level in in this case, the fencing skill, the rating of the weapon. In this case, let's say we're using a rapier, so two lethal. And if we were a Spanish fencer, thrusting would be an additional plus one. Let's say that our attribute is a three and our skill as a fencer is four. That would be a seven die pool, which becomes nine with the two lethal from the rapier for all of my fencing related activities that are non-specific i'll have a nine die pool but let's say i decide as a spanish style fencer to narrate a thrust toward my opponent this will give me a bonus die let's say i narrate a cut at my opponent this will give me a bonus die if i narrate parrying I still have my nine die pool. If I suddenly feel the urge to disarm the opponent rather than harm the opponent, I'll be operating at a minus one. This is an area in which I have less skill. Simple enough. Characters can learn more than one style of fencing. This is an interesting social element 
to the game, trying to get a teacher or trying to find a teacher who's skilled in more than one approach to fencing. And having this ability, taking the time to develop uh, the skill in another specialization area enables you to have scenes like you see in The Princess Bride where Inigo and the Man in Black duel on the cliff's edge, changing styles and talking the philosophy of combat as they do so, trading one advantage for another and finding and probing a new weakness and then seeing the opponent adapt to that and cover it at the expense of their previous attacking strategy. Very cool stuff. And in a game like All for One, which has baked in rivalries, this can really enhance the struggles for position and renown between the Musketeers, the King's Guard, and Richelieu's Cardinal's Guard. It's excellent stuff. So, in play, adding in these, these bonuses is simply fast. It's already written on your sheet. You know, so it doesn't add complexity, but it does add spin-off effects in terms of encouraging greater narration rather than I attack. Right? You have further mechanical incentive beyond style points to attack in a specific way. And this helps you set up the encounter to enable you to do just that, earning style points all the while. The last element I think needs to be discussed is the base attribute. When All for One first came out, there was discussion on the forum about why fencing would be linked to strength. So, melee combat in Ubiquity is tied to strength. And this is not saying that all good fighters must be huge, big, burly, you know, muscle types. What it's saying is that the, the attribute connected to inflicting harm on another person is related to strength, as is the endurance, the physical endurance, to continue in the fight. The, the blend of these two things is characterized by the strength score connection to melee combat scores. Right? So fencing is a very physical activity. It requires muscular control, shall we say. Yes, it requires dexterous accuracy. Yes, it requires uh, agility, the ability to move. But at the end of the day, fencing schools, historical ones, taught a wide variety of weapons. These weapons were not the light weapons of modern fencing schools. And so the base assumption is that this is going to be tied to strength. Now, Ubiquity is a very flexible system, and it encourages people to find a way to represent their character. And to support this, there are talents which allow you to replace base attributes with other things, meaning you don't have to have a character who has high strength, high dex, high intelligence, high charisma, this sort of thing. You can have a character like Sherlock Holmes, for example, who can use their great intellect for devastating uh, physical attacks. How do they do this? There's, there are talents which allow you to swap a base attribute for another base attribute. So if you prefer to imagine a character who is very accurate, and it's not their strength, it's their speed and agility, which is enabling them to strike weak points to deliver damage, then you can take the finesse attack talent, which allows you to replace strength for any particular skill. So you could use it to replace strength in its connection to melee, or you could use it to replace strength in connection to your fencing skill, or what have you. Ubiquity has you covered in, in that respect. Likewise, this is true of charisma. You can take the bold attack, replacing strength with your charisma. You can scare the crap out of your opponent, convincing them before blades even cross that you are going to win. You can do the calculated attack, replacing strength with intelligence. Right? Your greater intellect enables you to outmaneuver them and score your deadly blows. So it's a very, very broad and deep game, deepened even further with 
the development of the fencing schools and all of the things that uh, that, that brings with it. Fencing schools, as I mentioned earlier, are a resource. They are a, a social function. They enable you to gain access to training, to uh, new and rare talents, specifically focused on your style. They give you social connections. Uh, they allow you to gain a mentor and benefit from the mentor rules in Ubiquity. So fencing schools are a very, very rich part of the game. And these just the, just the tip of the iceberg of this is the fencing styles. Likewise, in Revelations of Mars, one of the things that you can use to really create a, a sense of an alien environment are these alien fighting styles, Martian martial arts and the like. So the armed combat skill there allows you to, to tailor how those things interact with each other and show some of the, the national character or, or cultural character of the people who use that fighting style. So this, I hope, has been a helpful video on this small aspect of ubiquity combat. In a nutshell, fencing operates as a finely tuned specialization, which splits uh, its bonuses up across five skills. They are a plus one, a zero, or a minus one to each of those five things, disarm, feint, parry, thrust, and slash. And they add that little extra narrative drive, that little splash of color to your combat. Enjoy.